This is a hypothesis test about two populations for the mean. The question says below are sample statistics for stopping distances of winter and alpine tires. Assume that the populations are normally distributed and the popula population variances are not equal. Test to see if there are differences between the means of these two types of tires using a 0.05 level of significance. Now we'll assume that the first population is those winter tires. We see a sample size of 10, a stopping distance standard deviation of the sample of those 10 tires is 10 feet. The mean of those 10 tires is 102 feet. In the second population, we'll call that the alpine tire. And we see we have a sample of size 12. A standard deviation of those stopping distances for those 12 tires is 4 feet. And a mean of those 12, tire, 12 uh, tires is 94 uh, feet. In order to do a hypothesis testing, we follow our six-step process. In step number one, we want to identify the given values in symbolic form. Well, they're already given to us. We're just going to label the subscripts to denote which population it's from. The subscripts say if it's from the first population or from the second population. N1 is equal to 10, the winter tires. We have 10 of the 10 tires. Uh, S1, or the sample standard deviation of those 10 tires, is 10 for the winter. And X bar 1 is 102. N2 is the alpine tire, or the second population. The sample size is 12. Standard deviation is 4. And the mean is 94. In step number two, we're going to identify the claim in symbolic form. Now we're testing to see if there are differences between the two means of these two types of tires. Well, that would be the claim in mathematical terms is mu1 is not equal to mu2, meaning that they are different. In our, in our alternative hypothesis, we have to put our claim because we don't include the equal sign. The null hypothesis must always contain equals. So mu1 is equal to mu2 in this case. And the claim goes in the alternative hypothesis. And we can never change the claim. It is what somebody says, so we'll put it in the alternative. If we use our algebra, we subtract mu2 from both sides, and we get our null hypothesis mu1 minus mu2 is equal to 0. We do the same for the alternative hypothesis, subtract mu2 from both sides of the equation, and we'll get mu1 minus mu2 is not equal to 0. The reason why we do this is because we need these hypothesized values for our test statistic. In step number three, we calculate our test statistic. We know our standard deviation of our sample, and same for both populations. So sample one and sample two, we know the standard deviations. So we have our t-test statistic because we have a small sample size for both of these uh, populations. We take x bar one minus x bar two minus mu one minus mu two and divide by the standard deviation, s1 squared. That's the variance or the standard deviation squared, which is the variance of our first population, divided by the sample size of our first uh, sampling, plus S2 squared, or the variance of our second sampling. Or if we take S sub 2, which is the standard deviation, and then square it, that would again get us to that value. And N2 is the sample size for the second population or the second sampling. So we fill in all of the numbers that we have. X bar 1 is 102. X bar 2 is 94. Mu 1 minus mu 2, we always obtain that from the null hypothesis. It's the numerical value obtained from the null hypothesis. That's why we want to subtract mu 1 minus mu 2. And we get 0. And then we take S1 squared, which is 10 and then square it, divide by 10, which was n1, plus 4, square it, divide by 12, add those two number, add those values together, and then take the square root. So what we'll find is, in the numerator, we'll have 8, divided by, in the denominator, 3.36650146. Carry all decimal places until the end of the calculation. And then simplified down, you'll get t equals 2.376. In step number four, we're doing the traditional approach to hypothesis testing. We have to identify if this is a one or a two-tailed test. 
This is a two-tail test because our alternative says so. It means not equals, so not equals means greater than or less than. So we draw our t distribution and shade in the two tails. We then take our level of significance of alpha equals 0.05 and we divide by 2 because it's a symmetric distribution. 0.05 divided by 2 is 0.025. And it's a symmetric distribution, so we'll also have 0.025 in the left-hand tail. Our degrees of freedom, we use the smaller of n1 minus 1 or n2 minus 1. The degrees of freedom for the first sampling is n1 minus 1 or 10 minus 1 is 9. The degrees of freedom for our second sampling is n2 minus 1 or 12 minus 1 is 11. So we're going to use the smaller of these two numbers, 9 or 11, so we'll use the degrees of freedom of 9 since it's the smaller of those two. We then look up in our t tables using a degrees of freedom of 9 and a 0.025 uh, level to find the rejection region and we'll find the critical values of plus or minus 2.262. So our rejection region is t less than negative 2.2 and t greater than 2.262. So our, what we say in mathematical terms should match what our picture says. In step number five, we have to determine does our test statistic of 2.376 lie in our rejection region? And 2.376 does lie in our rejection region, so we're going to reject the null hypothesis in step number five because our test statistic lies in the rejection region. In step number six, we're going to reiterate that we have rejected the null hypothesis, and we have to determine is there or is there not sufficient evidence. Well, since our claim fell in the alternative, we're rejecting the null hypothesis, we can then support the claim. So we can then say there is sufficient evidence at alpha equals 0.05 level to suggest that there is a difference between the means of these two tire types, the winter and the alpine type tire.